You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Brian Kelly uh, on Wednesday introduced his defensive coordinator, Matt House, and his special team slash recruiting coordinator, Brian Polian, uh, to the media for the first time since they were hired. On Thursday, we'll get to meet the offensive staff. Um, it was, first of all, Brian Kelly on Brian Polian, who, of course, is one of the coaches who came with him from South Bend. Brian Polian's been with me the past five years, but you know his experience spans over two decades. And again, experience, uh, success, been part of um, uh, two BCS uh, playoff uh, appearances and um, recruiting. Uh, had been a recruiting coordinator for me uh, and has put together um, you know, a great track record as it relates uh, to recruiting. So, Brian Kelly, when he talked about Brian Polian, was mostly talking recruiting. And that's where the bulk of the attention from the Q&A to Brian Polian also focused. Not so much on special teams. But, for the sake of sort of getting it out of the way, you are replacing your place kicker, your kicking specialist, and your punter all after this season. Um Polian was asked, uh, this is Seven Muse, about the, the, the mindset that he brings to special teams. We need to re-energize a culture here where, where guys understand that our best players have to cover kicks. I mean, my job is made easier because Coach Kelly believes in the importance of the kicking game. And it starts with him. And that will bleed down through the rest of the, the, uh, the organization, the coaching staff, the players. And we're going to get uh, as many guys involved as, po as possible and, and, and continue to try and play at a high level in the third phase of the game. There was a, uh, for, for better or worse, I know a lot of people sometimes lament things about Les Miles. One of the things that he emphasized so heavily was special teams. He put a tremendous value on it. And the best players did play special teams. Guys like Michael Clayton and Jarvis Landry started their career playing special teams. I mean, Jarvis Landry was a five-star receiver running downfield, splitting dudes in half on special teams. I remember when LSU played a very tight game against Ole Miss in Tiger Stadium. Uh, years all run together. This was 2009 or 2010. LSU scored late in the ball game, and again, that shouldn't have been as close as it was. And Stephen Ridley, who scored the, the touchdown, must have been 2010, went to Les Miles and said, I want to go cover the kick. Like, because he started his career on special teams and ultimately went and covered a kick right after scoring a winning touchdown. That was the mentality they had. And fair, in fairness, look, LSU, LSU was very good, very good on special teams under Greg McMahon. Uh, T-Bob and I did the Scone and T podcast, and we went coach by coach and looked at, okay, are you compared the, the current hire to the former and said, okay, are they better or worse in each slot? And the only one where we had a consensus, I believe, that they're better, they were better on the old set than they are now is McMahon. So Polian's got big shoes to fill in the special teams part of the game, but I do like him saying that. They're going to put the best players on special teams. Now, specifically with returning specialists, he, he even did say he made, he made a run at, at trying to get Cade York to come back for another year. Very excited to work with the guys that are here. Tried to talk Cade into coming back. Gave it one shot. Didn't work. <laughs> and wish him nothing but the best. He's, he's immensely talented. Very excited to work with the specialists in particular, and we'll work with them every day, and I think there's talent there. And, you know, we, we've, we've signed Jay Bramblett to, to join us, to, to augment us, and, and uh, we'll be excited to, to reunite with Jay here in the summertime. But one of the beauties of being the special teams coordinator is that you get to work with the entire cross section of the team. And the the last probably five to seven days, the, the analyst I'm working with, Lester Erb, he and I have spent a lot of time watching LSU film, getting to know our guys, and, and excited about what we saw on film. That's as they prepare special teams. But the guys that he's watching on film, some of them are returning players, and a lot of them are transfers, because they had to completely rebuild this roster. Brian Kelly and Brian Poley. Because keep in mind, as the recruiting coordinator, a big part of what he's doing is building this roster, making sure that they're taking into account a lot of variables 
that aren't going to leave them vulnerable in the future like they were when they took over. Um, this is a long answer. This runs about a minute. It's number four, Muse. It runs about a minute, and he was asked about you know the success they had in the transfer portal in a very short amount of time when he came in. And I thought this was very... Uh, this gave a great glimpse into how deeply they consider every single spot on this roster. It helped us rebuild the roster. I mean, when you look at the bowl game, I think we were at 39 or 40 scholarship players available for the bowl game. We couldn't move forward like that. And and there are limitations as to, you know, how many initials that you can invite into a class. And we had to be judicious about uh, how many of those guys were going to be transfer players that might offer more immediate help. How many of those transfer players had eligibility remaining? We, we could not take a, a huge number of guys that only had a year left because then the roster was going to get top heavy and and we were going to uh, face different issues coming down the road so that was that was difficult and to be honest with you I kind of leaned on my father Bill Poley and my brother Chris who they've got plenty of experience in how to approach free agency and let's not mistake it for lack of a better term that's what the transfer portal is it's a one you're a one-time free agent so we had to be responsible in in how we handle that and feel like with coach Kelly's guidance and the work of all the people in the football operations center that we did a we did a really good job how about that they essentially approached the transfer portal as one year free agency talked to his, his dad of course Bill Polian is a pro football hall of famer for his work in the front office and building championship teams what a resource to be able to lean on but even just considering you'd love to take transfers but you can't take just transfers that are one year guys because then you're left in the same spot where you have a massive roster turnover again next season if ultimately the goal is, as Brian Kelly stated, is to build the program through high school recruiting and to supplement with the transfer portal, well, then you've got to make sure that you're recruiting enough high school players at positions of need to make sure you don't end up in the situation that Ed Ogeron left this program. And, I mean, you heard, listen, you heard Brian Poling say it right there. I mean, he said it pretty candidly. They were in a dire situation. We had 39 players available. I think he said 39 or 40 players available, scholarship players available for the bowl game. It's absurd. At a place like LSU, uh, I mean, so the task they had initially was a Herculean one to try to build up a roster in roughly, I mean, certainly initially the two weeks to the December signing period and then, you know, about six weeks that you had until the February signing period. And I think they've done, you know, a fantastic job. Now, they still have four more spots available if they want to go attack the portal further. And Brian Poling was asked if they're done. Are they going to fill those spots? There are still initial scholarships available, and Coach Kelly and myself and the, the coordinators and Coach Wilson will talk through those needs and, and determine if investment in another transfer might be uh, in the best interest of our program. You know, it, it's a it's a tricky deal, and and you you have to manage it wisely, and and we we've we've tried to do that uh, as best we can here moving forward. You heard him mention Coach Wilson. Coach Wilson is Frank Wilson. Of course, Frank Wilson at one point was LSU's recruiting coordinator. Now he's back on staff, but not as recruiting coordinator. So he's got a, a really big title, assistant head coach or whatever it is, and you know, run, running game. Uh, you, you know, he's I mean, he's got a, a big title, and it'll be whatever it is to make sure that he gets you know, paid significantly, which justified him leaving a head coaching job if he needs to come back to LSU. But he's not the recruiting coordinator. But this was something that I love to hear from Brian Polian, and this I think is maybe the most encouraging thing. And I've said this about, about Brian Kelly as well. Brian Kelly and the way he assembled his staff did so in a manner that was very self-aware. He did two things primarily. He brought in guys that know him, guys like Mike Denbrock, guys like Robert Steeples or, or Kerry Cooks, guys that know Brian Kelly, Brian Polian, that know Brian Kelly, what his expectation is, how he builds a program, there's familiarity there. And then he brought in guys that know Louisiana. And how those two cross-sections merge, I think, is going to determine the success or failure of this staff and ultimately the program. But it was very self-aware of Brian Kelly to realize he had to have that because he doesn't have experience here. And it is different here. And winning here, meaning in this dirt, in the state of Louisiana, winning recruiting battles is massively significant for any coach that's going to win at a high level at this job. So he needed that. So he needed a Frank Wilson. And I thought Brian Polian today was 
very similar in the way he underscored the importance of guys like Frank Wilson on the staff. There's no doubt that Coach Wilson is going to be a, a strong asset as it relates to the recruiting operation, and we are going to lean on his expertise in the state. I certainly don't accept the role of recruiting coordinator and come in and act as though I understand fully the landscape in the state, the relationships, all the history. That's not my strong suit. We're going to lean on Coach Wilson and Coach Sloan and, and Coach Hankins and uh, Hankton, excuse me, all the guys that know the state really well. I'm going to focus on, on what I do well, which is roster building and um, player evaluation and keeping the offense and the defense communicating with one another. And really, my job is to ensure Coach Kelly's vision of recruiting. There's a lot of guys on staff that are going to go be tasked with winning one-on-one -on -one recruiting battles, going into homes and going to high school games and staying on prospects. What Brian Poling is telling is my job is to evaluate the talent and make sure that we manage our roster. That got lost with the previous staff. They, didn't, they did not properly evaluate talent and they did not manage the roster. That's what Brian Poling is telling us. These are going to be my jobs. I'm going to make sure we're going after the right players at the right positions, and I need all of these people on staff who have their expertise in the state to help us win those recruiting battles. And Frank Wilson's at the top of that list. I thought it was great from, uh, from Brian Poling. One more. I want to jump back real quick. I want to jump back to Brian Kelly. Um, because the transfer portal is so important, but this all m meshes with the idea of winning Louisiana, right? And and again, so important in this state because it's, it's the competitive advantage you have at LSU. It's the thing that will help you stay competitive while A&M is throwing out the type of money they are for NIL deals that nobody can compete with. The thing that LSU has is the dirt, is that the, there are so... There are Walker Howards and Will Campbells and kids that were born in this state that would give their arm to wear the purple and gold on a Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. And you have to lean into that. And Brian Kelly did it not only in the recruiting class, not only with his staff, but with the transfer portal as well. He talked about his philosophy there. There were some specific charges there. You know, we were looking for guys that um, had a connection to the state of Louisiana. So it wasn't an accident that a lot of these guys uh, were from the state, wanted to come back uh, to Louisiana, wanted to play for LSU for whatever reason. You know, they, they didn't end up playing football here in their freshman, sophomore years, but want to be here. So we were going to take guys that have, of high character. Uh, one of them was a captain at, at another school in the SEC that were good students, that we weren't taking guys that were – not above the line, so to speak, for us. And we're going to impact the, the culture of our team in a positive way right away. And one of those criteria was if they could be from Louisiana, that would be a, a big plus for us. Guy ain't no dummy. Colby Fields from Louisiana. Jar Bernard Converse from Louisiana. Greg Brooks. Makai Garner, Joe Fouché, Noah Kane, Kyron Lacey. Y'all, I mean, <laughs> he went and got dudes from this state. Even dudes that played in the SEC were starters. But they just wanted to play here. Lean into it, man. That's how you're going to be successful. Good stuff today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.